Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today we're going to do a video on rolling mills. Um, Pepe Tools has just sent me this fabulous one over here. Here's the information because I can't remember those things. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to use a rolling mill, why you would need a rolling mill, uh, in particular we're going to be talking about this, how to use this one, and a little bit on maintenance. So. That's about all the exciting, oh wait, one more thing I need to tell you. If you need more information on Rolling Mills, I do have a web page on my site under Resources Tools, and it's called Rolling Mills. So check that out when the video's over if you want to learn more. So I'm going to get set up for a second part. Well, we're back, and uh, of course the cats wanted to get in on the video. I know some of you hate them, but some of you love them. So anyway, um, what I want to talk about now is You've got to watch the Pepe video on how to unpack this thing if you get the Pepe um, 90 millimeter or whatever rolling mill because it's tricky. Um, the only thing I don't like about this rolling mill is all that styrofoam in the box, which is a very small complaint, but it drove me nuts for billions of pieces. So I have a big garbage bag and watch the video first. So when you go to set this thing up, you want to make sure that you have place for this handle to turn freely so you don't want to stick it in the middle of your workbench because you'll never be able to turn the handle. It's rather long which gives you a little extra leverage to turn it. You also want to have it on something incredibly sturdy either mounted to the floor like um, they have stands for rolling mills that you can bolt to the floor um, or a big heavy desk like this. Um, I don't have this screwed in because this Pepe actually donated this to Chimera Makerspace in Sebastopol where we have a jewelry studio. So I don't want to screw it onto my desk. Um, but there are bolt holes on here. You can either put two. There's a spot right here and a spot on the back. Or you can do it in the little legs. There's four legs. Um, and the other thing you need to consider is is that you want it easy for the metal to go in and to come out. Um, if you have something right here, your metal is going to end up being pushed and bent out of shape when you roll it through the mill. So uh, that's the basics on the setup, except let me mention two little doodads here. I, there's an Allen wrench to hook the uh, handle on, and I just taped it to the side of the machine so that it doesn't get lost. And I also marked on here what direction to turn sorry the t-bar so that to shows where it's closing you can make it so it shows where it's opening whatever and also wrote a little note over here about what my maximum thickness is between the rollers and this in this case it's five centimeters so that's it on setup and I'm gonna talk to Ralph Ralph so on the rolling mill, you want to work with softened metal, which is annealed metal. I do have a video on how to anneal metal on YouTube. Um, the softer the metal, the better it works and doesn't crack when you roll it through the mill. There's great pressure put on your metal when you put it through here. Another thing you need to do at all times is protect the steel rollers because whatever mistakes that maybe dent these rollers or scratch them, it's going to show up on your metal every time. So if you're using steel with the with this roll with any rolling mill you want to make sure that you've got a sandwich i usually use two pieces of brass above and below and make sure that whatever you're rolling is fits inside of the the sandwich that you've made and that way that the steel won't damage your rollers another thing you never want is any kind of moisture in here so if you're annealing and then pickling dry it and let it sit out for a few minutes because it's amazing how little moisture it can take to to uh, rust any of these rolling mills rollers. Um, what the heck was the other thing I was going to say? Don't you love it when a thought just goes right out of your head? Uh, <laughs> oh, if you're going to be rolling plant material through here, use, um, you can make a, a sandwich with um, cardstock. But you don't want to roll green stuff through here because there's potential for the moisture to get on the roller. So use dried plant matter if you're going to do rolling uh, through on the mill. And here's a little trick that I learned. I'm going to probably massacre your last name, Rhonda. I'm sorry, but Rhonda Coriel, I believe, uh, has a great video, which I have a link to on my website, about how to clean and oil the rollers on the machine. And I'm just going to show you really briefly right now. I don't have, I think it's Simic. 
Chrome or something. It's a metal polish and cleaner. Um, I'm wondering if Brasso might work too. I have to contact the manufacturer on that. But anyway, you get a dowel that's not going to fit between the rollers, and but I mean, widthwise, depthwise, but fits across here inside. And then you get a piece of, of toweling that fits around it, and you fold it like this. And I've already put some, uh, I used some three in one on here. And then you open this up all the way. Excuse me while I stand up. And then you put the fabric in here and roll it in. And then you just keep rolling it. And the, the rollers are running around on the oil soaked cloth. And then take it out. And on the back side, we don't have any. And this will kind of take off any excess. It's the wrong way. There we go. me it's the machine so that's that's basic you know keeping your rollers together um, maintenance and um, I'm gonna go put this away so I should briefly talk about the parts and the names of the parts on the rolling mill um, this is called a t-bar and this opens and closes the rollers um, We'll, I'll show you how to roll something in a minute and talk a little more in detail about it. These are your dials, and this has to do with helping you to set the amount of pressure on your metal, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. And then we have our rollers, which spin by use of this handle here. Um, one of the things that's really cool about this uh, rolling mill compared to the economy ones that are out there on Amazon and other places um, is that this is a four to one gear ratio. I know that doesn't mean anything when you say it like that, but think of it this way. Um, it literally gives you four times the strength. So every time you roll this, this handle around, the, um, the rollers move a quarter of a turn. So what this does is it gives you more control. It, it makes it a lot easier to put, exert these huge amounts of pressure that we put on this. And the uh, economy rolling mills have a direct drive. So when you turn this one rotation, the rollers turn one rotation. And what happens a lot is you end up with these flat dents in the metal. So this helps to prevent having the four to one or five to one gear ratio helps to prevent the rollers from flattening the area. And if you're um, like me and losing a lot of strength, even though I work out really hard, um, having having a four to one gear ratio is awesome. It makes it just so much easier. So anyway, I'm moving on to uses because I always talk a little too much. Apologize. Um, <clears throat> uses for this and this particular one, the combination rolling mill. What that means is that you've got a flat area and you have these grooved areas. Um, the one that has a groove on the top and is flat on the bottom is used for making half round wire which you use for making ring shanks or framing or whatever you want to do with it. So one side will be flat and then you'll have a dome on the top. The other side the, where the grooves are on the top and the bottom is used for making square wire uh, which is awesome to have around and there's various gauges or you can start thick and bring it all the way down and end up with a piece this big. Um, underneath this paper over here which shows you some of the things that you can do with a rolling mill making sheet so I got a sneaky thing here so this is an ingot so after I hammer this down a little bit I'm gonna roll I can roll through here and make my own sheet metal um, you can take round wire triangular wire and turn it into square wire you as we talked about you can make the half round wire for whatever you can pattern metal you can also make triangular, this should say wire, triangular uh, wire by soldering two pieces of wire together at one end and rolling it through and you end up with two half squares which is a triangle. Um, so that's another benefit so you can make two kinds of wire. And um, also you can taper wire in here too. So I have a video on that also that we'll have a link for. So those are some of the things that you can do with a rolling mill, and I'm sure there are other uses, but I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. 
So one of my favorite things to do with a rolling mill is to pattern my metal and there are quite a few ways that you can actually do that. Um, the big thing to remember is always to protect the rollers. Protect the rollers. Um, down here I've got a brief list of things that you can use to pattern if you would like to come down and look. So the first thing that you can use is screening, like the kind you use for windows. Um, a lot of the screen today is plastic. Um, I haven't rolled that. It might work. But if you do use a steel screening, you might want to, well, you have to make this brass sandwich to protect your rolling mill. Um, you can poke um, holes in the screening. You can spread the fibers apart to make patterns. So you don't have to just go with the screening. The next thing you can use, which is very similar to the screening is metal mesh that comes in different flavors and once again you can alter the look of it by bending or poking through the fibers. Ow! Ow! That was not fun. Um, okay, I'm going to stick that over here. Then the other thing you can do for a one shot only deal, but this is kind of fun especially if you have a lot of little uh, paper punches laying around which somehow I did. I don't know where they came from. But here's like my Mickey Mouse one. Here's the paper this I use cards, heavy cardstock for making this one. Um, there's also you can um, layer them on here on top, and that creates a deeper impression. Whereas the ones that are cut out are going to give you a raised impression. So here's an example of the difference. This is the one that's. Oh my God! There's a cat at the door. Okay, so, and then you can also use just regular paper. Uh, watercolor paper works really well. You want something that reads about 21 to 26 gauge on your, um, on your little B&S gauge here. Or you can, 0.7, I think is the uh, size for the 21 gauge. Um, you can also use fabric. Um, here's a piece of edging from a, a fabric. You can use lace is really awesome with it. Um, there's, you know, run anything through with the fabric. I would make a little um, envelope out of the the cardstock. And then etch plates is another thing I love to do. Um, this is a positive and a negative uh, plate. This is dented in so the metal will, it will on when you roll it through, will be popping up and this one will be sunken in. So it changes the appearance of it. And these are great to make on your own because you can have unique patterns that nobody else has out there. Um, these are the um, etching plates. Hi, Lulu. These are the etching plates, not etching plates, um, brass plates that you can buy commercially. These are from Metalliferous, these long ones. And it's really ideal to cut the plates to size. Um, otherwise, you can end up, this is an example that's a little extreme, but I rolled a piece of I wanted to pattern my wire and basically destroyed my plate by doing that so sometimes if you're running a small piece on a bigger one like this the area that you roll on is going to get wrecked so it's you might as well just go ahead and cut it to size like this um, oh Lulu you have to wait and then we have other ideas um, this is pierced metal that I've sawn out and either printed or drawn a pattern on and, and sawn it out. And this will pop the, um, uh, when you roll it through, it'll pop the metal up. So it'll be a raised pattern. And then you can also solder wires onto one end and curl the wire around, making shapes and different patterns with wire. This is a really fun thing to do too. And also there are these embossing plates that are used in the paper craft scrapbooking industry. Um, these will work. They won't last as long as something that's as heavy gauged as this is, but and they will distort somewhat, but you can get several uses out of them. They're already sawn out, so you don't have to pierce them. Then we have Bonnie Dune makes these awesome plates that are for rolling mill and for the hydraulic press. They're made out of steel, but they're made out of a steel that's softer than a rolling mill. They're designed for rolling mill or for hydraulic press. So they, you don't have to build the brass sandwich around this. This can actually go in and it won't harm your rolling mill. Once they've been used in the rolling mill, don't use them uh, in the hydraulic press again because they do get warped somewhat from the rolling mill. And then there's always found metal 
like this I got at my metal recyclers. Uh, this is steel, so once again, if you're not sure or you know what it is and you know it's steel, make sure you make a brass sandwich top and bottom on the brass. So those are some ideas for um, making patterns on your metal, and there's tons that I haven't even talked about. You use feathers and dried skeletons of leaves and other things like that, so just get creative on that. I'm going to try out my pierced piece that I did yesterday on the rolling mill. I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you want to do first when, you, when you're using this is to open the rollers up so that you can slide your metal and your pattern because these are both base metals. Um, I don't need any protection on them. And I've got it about in the middle here. And what I want to do is tighten this down loosely enough that I can do it with two fingers like that. And then these dials up here, you want to set to zero. Zero. You can do one or both. Um, if you have a Durston, you can't turn these like this. So what you need to do is write down where what number it is on the dials so that you so you'll see what happens next. Anyway, so that, once that's done, then I'm going to open it up and take my metal out, and I'm going to bring this back to zero. So that's where my metal was rather snug in the mill and then I'm going to, to close it down about a quarter to a half turn more and hopefully that will be the right pressure and then I'm going to I'm gonna get my ring off I'm doing this left-handed so that we can film easier make sure my package is all lined up and I'm going to turn it the right way that's a little too hard so I'm going to set that back Bit. You don't want it so hard that you, you know, you've got to lay on top of it, but you don't want it so easy that you're not going to get any imprint. So I'm using, it's two-handed, two-handed for a 62-year-old. <laughs> and there's our pattern, and it could have been a little harder, but for me it's difficult. You can barely see it right now because there's no um, patina on here. But I think you might be able to see some of it. It's a pretty cool pattern, actually. So what I'll do is then I'll anneal this and flatten the metal out. I'm going to leave this as is. And you can see I can still use this for patterning. So I could, um, at this point, if I was really smart and I wanted to do this a little deeper, I would just go ahead and cut another piece of copper to go on this, tighten it down just a hair, and roll it through and see how deep the pattern is. Um, so, anyway, that's that's basically how you roll a pattern through uh, the rolling mill. So, thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I'm really impressed with this rolling mill. It's really, really heavy duty. It's got the 4 to 1 gear ratio. I love that. It's as easy to use as my Durston for their cheapest one, which has got a, sm a smaller um, roller. Um, is over $100 more than this one, but they do run up into the multi-thousands. Um, so it's an awesome rolling mill for the price, and it's I think if you're going to spend the money, skip the economy and, and get one of the Pepe um, rolling mills. They really are cool. Very happy with it. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you all. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video. It helps the ratings. And uh, visit my website, nancyltheamilton.com. Email me questions, please, at nancy.lt.hamilton at gmail.com. And visit me on Facebook, Pinterest, and a lot of other stuff. I'm tired. Bye-bye.